am Monica and welcome to my reading vlog for It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover, the sequel to It Ends With Us. So before we get into the vlog, I just want to say a little disclaimer. Yes, I'm reading Colleen Hoover book and I know a lot of people dislike her, but I just wanted to go into the sequel of It Ends With Us because I just recently read, reread It Ends With Us and I'm curious to see if Colleen is able to craft something new without you know compromising what has happened in book one and with that i'm just gonna see if the writing holds up hopefully it does mainly i am just making this vlog for enjoyment purposes and just to record my thoughts and feelings anyways with it starts with us it picks up right where it ends with us ended and from the epilogue we're jumping right back into the story of atlas and lily in ryle but we're going to be learning more about atlas in this one and hopefully seeing a rekindling of Atlas and Lily's relationship. And before I get to the vlog portion, I will be mentioning full complete spoilers in this reading vlog. Anyways, let's just get right to the vlog. Hi everyone and welcome to my first check-in of It Starts With Us and I am around 25% um, of the way through. I am on chapter 12, page 87 now. Okay, and we start off this book with learning that we have dual point of views of Atlas and Lily and they're both not sure where this new potential relationship could go for both of them. I think for Atlas, he's more ready than Lily is because she's still grappling with being a new parent and then being recently divorced and then co-parenting with Ryle. So I think she's got a little bit more going on than Atlas at the moment. I do really like how Atlas and Lily are making the choice to start a new relationship. Really, it's like their first serious relationship with each other because as teenagers, there was a lot of circumstances that led them to be together. But now they're actually making the adult choice to be together and it's like having that new relationship butterflies and giddiness of being in a new relationship and I'm really happy for them to start this journey in this book. Also, and now that I think about it, this book is definitely a second chance romance book. It definitely fits for Atlas and Lily. And while I'm reading Lily's chapters i did pause at one point because ryle is still part of her life and lily is still trying to grapple with what happened with ryle it's just been roughly like two years ago for her and when lily needed to pull out that list of things of what ryle did to her i was just like that's um that's just like a sad reality for her but on Atlas's side of things, right now he's running his two restaurants and he's dealing with some trouble with his restaurants with vandalism and he has his mother contacting him again after many years. So I think with Atlas, he's just grappling with maybe coming to terms with his past. And for Atlas, I think he just needs to give Lily some time. But of course, he's been doing that and he's still quite patient with her. And Atlas is also reading Lily's journals again. And I'm just like, ugh, the journal entries again. It just seems too repetitive for me because I just read It Ends With Us. It's repetitive in that we're getting old passages from book one and I'm like, did Colleen not know what to do with this plot and just wrote this book because It Ends With Us got really popular on TikTok. It might be because of that, but anyways, I'll see how this book goes. I did want to do a second check-in and I am at page 162 of it starts with us and this is chapter 18 so i'm like halfway through i mentioned in the last check-in that atlas was reading lily's journal and the chapter right after that one atlas wrote a dear lily entry to her and we got to find out more about his childhood and how we're just getting more information about atlas himself and we also get Ryle getting triggered because Lily and Atlas's date ends. Lily goes home and he's watching Finding Nemo for the first time because Lily named their daughter's middle name as Dory. And Ryle is just like, oh, you're, you named our daughter after Atlas and your connection to Atlas. I didn't mention this in my first check-in, but with Atlas, I did suspect that the person who was vandalizing his restaurants was like an unknown little brother. I wrote it in like my notes and I was right <laughs> because Atlas's mom shows up and she only cares about herself and while Atlas is like shocked that he has family 
since he's been alone for such a long time now. And that his little brother has been missing for two weeks. That scene happened with um, Atlas dropping off Josh. We have now child abuse and neglect as themes in this book. Continuing from book one, which is not good. And I'm just thinking, Atlas, just get your baby brother out of there. Get your baby brother away from your toxic mother. It's like a cycle of abuse happening. It's now Atlas's story to end his family cycle of abuse, which is definitely not easy. I am predicting that Lily and Atlas will become a blended family with Josh being adopted or having Atlas as his new guardian by the end of the book and then we have Lily and Atlas I don't know, either getting together or I will be fine with them being together. That's my prediction for a good ending. And welcome to my third check-in. I am 75% for the way through of It Starts With Us, meaning I'm on chapter 28. At this point in the book, we have learned that Atlas and Lily have talked about her and Ryle's abuse I really like the realistic mention of Lily still being a new mother and breastfeeding and how breastfeeding you might have milk being produced and I really like that addition. It's not really mentioned sometimes but I do like how it's being more normal and normalized in popular media and how Lily is still recovering from her labor and being a new mother and how your body changes after that. And I really like how Lily mentioned to Atlas that Atlas is like a grounding figure for her during her life, um, especially when Ryle was abusing her and hitting her, that when she thought of Atlas, it kind of brought her back to like, okay, it's not my fault when her own mind started to go into that direction of this is not okay. So she doesn't blame herself as much. But as we could see in this book that again, this type of situation is really delicate. She's still grappling with dealing with Ryle because they're co-parenting and it's just a whole other thing. When Ryle does find out that Atlas and Lily went on a date and he stayed the night, he got angry again. Pretty much like pushed Lily up against the wall and almost hit her but like didn't and like that scared her again. But she came back to her senses and saying like, okay, I need to do something more than just um their current situation of like custody because she doesn't want to be scared all the time and she just wants to, you know, move on with her life. This is a small thing, but I mentioned back in my It Ends With Us vlog that the age gap between Atlas and Lily when they were teenagers was a little bit weird. And there was like a mention of that in this part of the book. And Lee was saying, oh, like, I didn't think it was weird. I understand their circumstances were really difficult, but it was still weird, okay? <laughs> now that they're adults, like, the age gap doesn't really bother me because they're fully consenting adults. But when you're a teenager, your brain isn't fully developed. So, and I think it was like chapter 27 where... Ryle goes to Atlas's restaurant and oh my gosh, the difference in their personalities. Although they both have different traumatic experiences from their childhood and growing up, Ryle accidentally killing his brother as a child and then Atlas being homeless and going through abuse in his own home. Man, the differences in their personality is so apparent. I do acknowledge that anyone can get better no matter what type of trauma that you may have, but you just need to work through it and do the work instead of just, you know, staying where you are. And doing the work is like going to therapy, seeking help, trying to get down to the root of the problem. With comparing Atlas and Ryle, I think they both have different levels of compassion and it just comes more easily to Atlas than it does to Ryle. And that's just my opinion. If whatever I'm saying does not resonate with you. Take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. Anyways, that's my thoughts for this part and I'll see you in the last check-in and I'll conclude off this vlog. Okay, so very quickly what I thought right when I finished this book and in the last quarter of the book, I did end up crying twice. First was when Atlas gave Josh his own decision to either live or try to speak to his dad, Tim, or to make the decision to live with Atlas. 
And during that scene where they were in the car right outside Josh's dad's place, Josh said, maybe we can start our own little family, which is the two of us. And I started crying then. And then I think it was like the next chapter after that was the second time that I cried in this book where it's the chapter where they do the intervention for Ryle to get anger management classes. And I cried after that because Lily herself, she was still really scared in that moment. But having Alyssa and Marshall there as support was really nice of them. And it feels like Lily can finally move on with her life. And we did get that happily ever after ending that I did correctly predict near the halfway point of this book. Going right into if I thought this book was any good. After some thought, I'm going to rate It Starts With Us a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And the reason with that, I'm just going to start off with the bad and then go into the good. First off, I have to say this sequel isn't necessary. And the way that it ends with us, the first book ended, was perfectly fine with me and I was happy with that ending. The only reason why we even got a sequel and Colleen actually puts in like a little author's note at the beginning and in the acknowledgements because of book talk, there was a huge resurgence of popularity of It Ends With Us and then that prompted her to write a sequel. And with that, I did feel that some events were really convenient and were just making a way for a happily ever after ending for the relationship of Atlas and Lily. Some of those events were the resolution of the messy relationship between Lily and Ryle, the custody situation with Emerson, and we also have Atlas's family situation. So all of those conclusions of those events seemed really convenient. Whoever was the bad guy in those situations being Ryle and um, Atlas's mother, they both folded over and were like, okay, fine, I'll go with whatever you're saying. But I think at, by that point, both of those characters, Ryle and Atlas's mother, they were just tired of fighting all the time. But in reality, I don't think that would be the way Ryle would react to that intervention of having anger management classes being presented to him. But I do think maybe that can happen in reality. But then again, it is a book. So there is some level of suspension of disbelief that we have to maintain. And one thing that really irked me was Lily writing her diary entries to Ellen still. And I think it's a practice of comfort for her at this point and to just write Dear Ellen, but in my mind I'm like, you could just journal normally. <laughs> and I did mention this in the vlog section, I really disliked how there was repetition of Lily's old journal entries, but now Atlas is reading her journal, but then that turned into a really cute form of communication between Atlas and Lily with Atlas writing her letters. And I don't think a man in real life would be so lyrical of expressing their emotions and all of their thoughts and feelings about their significant other, in this case Atlas, about Lily. It did feel like it was a woman writing a man's journal entry or like a love letter to Lily, but I guess like that was the point of it. So. I'm just going to accept it for what it is. What did bump up my reading was because I did end up crying in this book and for me to be reading a book, it's really rare for me to actually like tear up and cry. But I really think that this book was a nice sequel and follow up to It Ends With Us even though it wasn't necessary. I really do think that this book does point out that there can be hope for those that get out of abusive situations and that it will take a lot of healing and a lot of patience on the survivor's end to be maybe open up to a new relationship like how Lily does in this book. It does take her some time but I think ultimately with Lily, it's also like a reconnection and a second chance at a romance with Atlas. So I think in Lily's case, it was more so, oh my gosh, it, what a chance. <laughs> what a chance encounter again to meet Atlas again. I loved Lily's healing journey as well as Atlas's, but my main focus was on Lily. I really enjoyed how she learns to continue to stand up for herself and to learn that she still has her own worth. She's 
deserving of someone who will love her and respect her. I think she is still really resilient and strong for going through all she did with Ryle. And it does help that she has that support system that her mother did not. And I do have to mention Ryle and thank goodness that he's still being portrayed as a manipulative asshole. He was not redeemed at all for me in this book. And that's a good thing because I don't think there can be redemption in these types of cases, especially for a character like Ryle. Ryle's still intimidated, pushed, and as well like flirted towards Lily with unwanted advances and Lily was still in quite a mentally and emotionally vulnerable space with being a new mother, trying to figure out her role as a new mother, and also being recently divorced from Ryle. And there was a moment that Ryle did push Lily against the wall and it was describing Lily's thoughts and she was panicking, but um, Lily only tolerated these behaviors only because of Emerson, but it was only for a very short period. And she does learn that this tolerance isn't okay either. So I really like that she realizes her worth and Atlas does help her realize that. For Atlas, he deals with quite a lot in his POV and it's dealing with his family and his past coming back to his life. And his storyline was quite predictable, but I did enjoy it. And I'm still happy that um, Atlas was still the stand-up guy from book one. So all of those aspects of It Starts With Us saved this book for me. And if it didn't really focus much on like the healing process, maybe my rating would have been a lot lower. Overall, I think the sequel wasn't needed, but I'm still quite happy that the characters got their happy ending together. I believe that's everything that I want to say in this video and I'm so sorry about the audio kind of being all over the place. I'm still figuring out my audio situation but I hope you enjoyed this vlog and comment down below what you did think about It Starts With Us and what you thought about everything that went down in this book. I hope you all had a wonderful day. If you can give me a huge thumbs up, I really much appreciate that and also hit subscribe and ring the bell if you wish to watch more of my videos. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.